What's going on guys? Um, I've had a few people reach out to me about my pressure gauge, how to build a pressure gauge, where did I get the stuff to build a pressure gauge, and it's really, really, really simple. Um, this is the pressure gauge. We're going to go through right here in just a second on how to put it together. Um, it's really, really easy. It cost me about $21 and everything that I used to put it together I got from the local hardware store. Um, this place is a little smaller than an Ace, so I know if they have everything that surely um, your local Ace Hardware, Home Depot, Lowe's, they have it all. Um, the, the fittings, they're, you can get them galvanized, you can get them brass. Uh, it really doesn't matter, just as long as it's the right fittings. Um, so, it cost me $21.48 grand total for this whole thing. Uh, the two most expensive things on here was the quarter inch ball valve and the quarter inch pressure gauge. Um, the other stuff that you'll be using is a quarter inch male to male nipple, two inch, uh, quarter inch male to male nipple, half inch, um, a half inch to the spigot which is this piece right here and then um, your quarter inch T which is the centerpiece so and then your chuck for your air compressor um, so really there's just not a whole lot to it uh, to be honest it does take more time walking around the hardware store picking everything out than it does to actually put the thing together oh and Teflon tape you have to have Teflon tape so I'm going to go through, I'm just going to show you guys basically putting it together. It's really, really boring. It's a whole lot of Teflon taping and all that good stuff. Um, it, when you do go to your, especially if you go to a local place like Ace um, or just your local hardware store, you can, you know, you can screenshot that right there. Um, it's a better angle of it. You can screenshot that right there and tell them that's what you need to build and they can help you walk through and build it. I will say this real quick. Um, I know there's a lot of people who have different styles of pressure gauges um, and you know maybe some work better maybe they don't but this is what I use this is what I've used for years um, my clients are very very happy you know with with what I provide never had any issues with it so I'm sure to work for you guys and I really hope that it helps somebody out there so with all that being said um, let's get into putting this thing together well I just went through and put this whole thing together uh, and then I didn't have the stupid camera on so let's let's try this again all right make sure you can see everything okay so here is the receipt grand total I have twenty one dollars and forty eight cents in this all right we've got some nipples this nipples already screwed into this T um, from where I just put it together I can't unscrew it without boogering up these threads, but it's that's all that it is. It's nothing serious, so you're gonna need this nipple. This nipple here um, is two inches long. I got this one just to make the overall thing a little longer. It's not necessary, um, but I prefer it to be a little longer so that I can screw it in and it come back out past the box that the washer hookup are in, hookups are in. So we have a ball valve. Um, we have our pressure gauge. And we have our coupling to hook into the spigot. And then this is a half inch. All this does is drop it down from a half inch to a quarter inch. Everything else is quarter inch. So let's go ahead and get this thing rolling. Teflon tape. Um, if you've never used Teflon tape, there is a trick to it. You can screw it up, believe it or not. So when you put it on the threads, you want to make sure that you put it on the threads clockwise. Don't put them on there counterclockwise or it'll bundle up on the threads. Um, and the whole purpose it's supposed to be serving will not be accomplished. So just put it on here. There's still some Teflon tape on here from, like I said, I just literally went through all this. Um, so try to keep it as flat as you can. Go around and get your threads covered. And then just pinch it, break it off. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna screw these in finger tight for now, just to get everything started and kind of get it together. And then we're gonna come back and we'll cinch everything down. So um, 
all we're doing is a whole lot of Teflon taping. So if you're comfortable doing this part and you don't need to watch, you can probably skip to the end of the video. But it is October, so winterizations are about to pick up. So hopefully we all start seeing a fair amount of stuff coming in. I have noticed that the the um, smaller investors have picked back up on evictions and all of that good stuff. So the workload is picking back up a little bit, but I don't think the major major companies are gonna do it as of yet. Seems like they're still holding on. But this daggum COVID stuff sure threw a wrench in our business. I'm sorry about that. The reason it's important to Teflon tape all of these is so that you do not have any kind of a leak. You certainly don't want your gauge that you built to leak. takes more time to go out and buy the stuff than it actually does to put it together. There's not a whole lot to putting together. So with this deal right here, you see the handle opens. You just want to make sure that you don't have it to where it's jamming up against your gauge. The ball valve I use on mine is actually a lot smaller than this one. I don't really like this handle. In fact, I'd probably take an angle cut off wheel and, and cut it off right here and make sure you grind off all your burrs so you don't cut yourself when you go to turn it on and off. But then the last piece to the puzzle Alright, so there it is. Now all we have to do is go back and cinch everything down and figure out exactly. Um, I think I want the gauge facing this way. And I think I want the valve back over on this side. So I'm going to make sure that I can tighten it down to back to this side. When you're tightening these down, you need to you need to tighten them down. You know, you don't want them loose, but you don't just have to absolutely torque them down until your face starts turning red. Um, you know, just give them a fair amount of pressure, get them nice and snug, and that should be fine. So on this one, you really only have to tighten down this side because it's going to tighten this in there as well. And I would recommend getting some channel locks. These right here is just 
what I happened to grab that was the quickest and easiest to find. Six that on down. All right. I don't know how long that took, but it wasn't very long. And here's your pressure gauge. So one thing to keep in mind, this rubber washer has always got to be in there. Obviously you can't um, do a pressure gauge, a pressure test if your air is leaking out right here around where you hook it up to the spigot. So in the event of an emergency, um, I would uh, use a washer out of a water cap, you know, the plastic water caps we use, they all have a washer in there. Um, if it's in a, you know, if you don't have any of those and you're really digging deep, uh, you can run around the, the house and hopefully let somebody left a hose that you can take the washer out of it and use it. Um, but I normally, anytime I'm throwing a hose away, I, I always will grab the washer out of it and just keep it so I have a little place in my van where I have several of these. Because I, I leave this thing hanging up in the back of my van and it kind of sits, you know, like this. And just every so often it'll rattle out and I'll open the door and blah, blah, blah. And anyways, it just gets gone. So every time you go to hook it up, check, make sure you have your washer in there, but that's it. Um, you know, when you're, when you're, when you pump the system up to 35 PSI, all you have to do is turn this ball valve off to where the air can't come back out this way. And you can, that's it. Wait 30 minutes and see what it does. Um, I really hope this helped you guys out. Uh, I know a lot of you have asked me to do this for a while. This is just about a mirror image of the one I've been using, um, except for mine, like, is just um, all brass. It doesn't have any galvanized fittings, but, you know, like six and one half a dozen of the other. So, hope this helped you guys out. Um, thank you for watching, and all y'all have a nice day.